The last couple of weeks I have built a new home for my tadpole army. The ecosystem which grows and develops every day brought forth a few clusters of aquatic snail eggs which I wanted to take a hatching time lapse of. I set up my camera and used a 5 times magnification lens to see what is going on inside the tiny snail eggs. Here, the embryo metamorphoses into a juvenile adult. The beautiful, distinct snail spiral is clearly visible. This is marked by the appearance of rudimentary eyes and tentacles. The larval shell covers most of the posterior section, and the lung and heart also slowly develop. The size of the whole egg sac is smaller than one centimeter. This makes this project quite exciting for me, as you cannot see what's going on with the bare eye. This is the glorious sight of several freshwater pond snails in various embryonic stages. Every single one of those beautifully transparent egg capsules allows for the observation of a developing embryo, while also acting as a diffusion barrier that prevents the passage of large molecules. In other words, an egg capsule does a swell job of keeping the embryo within nourished and safe. After about four days, the embryo enters the metamorphic period and begins to resemble a miniature hippopotamus when seen from the front. This embryo has already developed a bilobed foot characteristic of a snail. A larval shell is formed and the first hint of asymmetry begins to show in the embryo. When I started taking the snail hatching time lapse, I thought it was a good idea to shoot it in their natural environment to show what's going on around the egg cluster. Countless microbes and small pond creatures showed by, some tried to eat the jelly, then this water bug carried the egg sac away. I prepared the egg sac on a clean surface outside the aquarium to shoot a time lapse without so much movement and distortion. This was actually pretty stupid as the egg cluster started to dry out. After a couple of hours, I put them back into the aquarium to save the snail's lives. I really liked how the embryos started to crawl around in their tiny eggs. I have added a scale for you for better understanding how tiny those creatures actually are. To show what is going on inside the embryos and to show you how their organs develop, I switched to polarized light. Those colors appear due to the birefringence or double refraction of their cellular components. Birefringence is a property of certain materials in which light passing through the material is split into two polarized beams that travel at different speeds and in different directions. When these beams recombine, they produce colors that are visible under polarized light. Aquatic snails contain various cellular components such as proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, and carbohydrates, which have different refractive indices and birefringent properties. When viewed under polarized light, these components can produce a range of colors and patterns that provide information about the structure and organs. The reason for this kind of view may be interesting, but as I only want to get a unique detailed look on the snail, just remember that polarized light will transform your image into some unique piece of art. Even though many different creatures were pretty interested in the snail egg, somehow they could not manage to eat them. They started to crawl around and explore my indoor garden pond, looking for any kind of food source. Aquatic snails are omnivorous and feed on a variety of organic matter present in ponds. Their diet includes aquatic plants and even other small aquatic animals, such as insect larvae or small crustaceans. Algae is a primary food source for many aquatic snails, as it is abundant in ponds and provides essential nutrients. Dead and decaying matter, such as fallen leaves or dead animals are also important food sources for snails as they break down and release nutrients into the pond ecosystem. Did you know that snails are able to swim upside down onto the water surface? And this is how it looks like when a snail is adding nutrients to my garden pond. As there are many predators in my basement ecosystem, I am quite excited to see if the snails will start to reproduce or get eaten by the other pond creatures. Countless microbes have started to show up, and the survival of the fittest has just started.